He sings God's praises and every day visits the temple. They took a, a small piece of wood, boom, hit on each person's head. He screamed in pain. The linga that everybody worships, his feet were on it and he was lying down. The yogi said, that's all, go home. There was a great sage, a well-known, even today, hugely celebrated sage whose name was Namdev, who came from the present state of Maharashtra. He was a devotee of Vithoba or Vithala. Vithala is one form of worship which uh, this temple in Pandrapur kind of galvanized a whole devotional movements. And Namdev stands out in that. So every day he is a devotee, he sings God's praises and every day visits the temple, spends long time there. He is already known in the town as a very great devotee. So one day somebody looks at him and they say, see, all your devotion is fine, but still you have not realized anything, you're not enlightened. So Namdev got picked. How do you say, I'm not enlightened, I'm just living for God. Every word I utter is of God. How can you say, I am not? He said, see, outside uh, the town today, under this particular tree, a few yogis have gathered. Many of them are enlightened beings. Maybe you should go and sit among them, you will realize what you lack. You becoming a celebrated devotee, all right? Slowly people are celebrating you more than the God. <laughs> so you must go sit there. So Namdev said, what's my problem, let me go on. He went and sat there. About ten, twelve are there and uh, then this person who had suggested this, I think it's time we test out in this group who is a you know, Kachagada, who is an unburnt pot? How do you find out who is an unburnt pot among these twelve, thirteen people who are sitting there? So they took a, a small piece of wood, a plank, a thin plank, and went and boom, hit on each person's head by the sound. They will know who is an unburnt pot. When they came and hit Namdev, he screamed in pain. Then they said, ah, this is an unburnt pot. Then Namdev felt deeply insulted, humiliated among people. And then he asked, what should I do? They said, all your devotion is fine, you're doing well on that area, but there's no realization here, you need a guru. He asked, who is that guru? They said, uh, see, if you go like this in this jungle, there's one little temple. There, there is a yogi, he's the best guru for you. He went there with a lot of uh, reservations, he went there. When he went and saw, the guru was lying down with his feet on the deity or the linga that was there. The, the linga that everybody worships, his feet were on it and he was lying down and enjoying the afternoon. Namdev saw this and he was aghast. He's a devotee. He cannot, he doesn't even, you know, in India most people won't even stretch their legs towards this. They will never stretch their legs towards me because that is considered highest level of disrespect. In a temple they will never ever sit like that. But here this yogi is putting his feet on the linga and lying down. Then uh, Namdev became very angry. And he said, what is this nonsense? You got your feet on the sacred linga and they tell me I must learn from you? The yogi said, oh, is it my feet are on the linga? I didn't realize. The one thing, I'm so very tired, can you just, you know, take my legs and put it this way? 
So Namdev lifted his legs and put it this way. Where he put his feet, there another linga came up. Oh, I'm sorry, once again on the linga, put it here. He again mowed it here, another linga came up. Wherever he put it, one linga came up. Then Namdev looked at him completely bewildered. The yogi said, that's all, go home. And then Namdev went home and they never, never went to the temple. People said, what happened to your devotion? You did not went to the temple? He said, I was a fool, I thought he was only in the temple. Now I see him everywhere. So I don't have to go to any particular place. I will go to the temple when I need to, I have no problem with that. But for me, wherever I look, he is there right now. This is what consecration means. Living in a consecrated space means that wherever you look, whatever you touch, should feel like divine. Hmm? To create such a space at home, here as a thing. Because when we create here, some of you will just smell it and go. It's good, it's a very good smell. You will just smell it. Smell it means I want you to understand. Suppose food comes, mmm, with the smell, then the mouth starts watering, then you have to ingest. If we just small show you the nice smell of the food and take it away, uh, there's no nourishment, there's pleasure but no nourishment. Then some will eat once in a way, so once in a way partake in what we refer to as sacred or divine, essentially intensified life, core life. Or you soak in it, these are the choices. Whatever your choices, they are your choices. If you think you have a very long life, you can come once in a way, partake in it and go, it's fine because we know one way or the other you will spread it. If you want to soak in it, if you understand, you are a mortal life, life is not forever, you want to soak in it, then such possibilities are there. We will be creating various opportunities where people can live and work, work and live here, create their own office spaces and live here, various ways. Many, many possibilities we will unfold in the next uh, twelve months or eighteen months. Slowly the unfolding of this will happen. The idea is maximum number of people should soak in the divine, not just have a little uh, flirtation. <laughs>